I have here a filter element which has never been used before. It is brand new. I think the, the easiest way for me to demonstrate this is, is to take this new filter element and turn it on its side slightly. I'm going to fill it with water. And then stop. We'll watch, we're going to watch it drain from the corner here. And we can see that, that it all just drained out, as one would expect, right? And that's just fine. There's very little piece of the total surface area of this element, right? I'm going to grab one from the pool now that, that's already been used. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to turn it on its side slightly, pull the water. And then stop. Look at this. It is it is holding the water in. Given the same surface area, if I were to count the amount of seconds it takes to drain just that portion, we can see that the performance of this is terrible, right? So if we were to dunk these underwater and drain them, we would see that, yeah, we have a significant problem here. This is another problem you cannot fix by backwashing the uh, the DE filter. Look, it, it's still it's still draining. I'm talking and it's still draining. It is so slow, and I'll explain the reason why. Even though I washed these, we didn't address two major issues. One of them is grease and oil from organic material or suntan lotion or, or what have you, right? And that could be removed with a degreaser, which, which we are going to do, right? The other one is, is the calc and minerals from the water. And in my other video for uh, decalking the, the salt cell, you saw that, that the, the mineral deposits that, that got caught on the salt cell also gets caught in between, microscopically, in between these woven fibers and reduces performance. So it's going to need to be decalked with acid too. So we have a two-step process to increase the performance of these. And that's what I'm going to do now. So I use my leaf garbage can and a garbage can liner for this application letting it fill up with water now. I only need to fill it up about halfway to do this job. I've added detergent to the water and now these will soak in here for a couple of hours. While everything was soaking in the degreaser, I found time to go to Leslie's and pick up this new O-ring. Come back every now and again just to agitate these, move around a bit, move the, uh, the soap and whatever. So I'm gonna go now and remove this old gasket. Wow, this one's done. I can just feel it. Gasket's just coming apart as I touch it on my fingers. Some people get really bent out of shape when you tell them what solvents you use to clean up stuff around pools, even if you clean up the solvent entirely. So you're going to have to use your imagination or figure it out for yourself. Here we go, this portion's all dressed up and ready for the new gasket. I wanted to come back to this right quick. I had filled this up with water previously, except for the small amount that had evaporated. Uh, this thing is not leaking, everything is bone dry. So the manifold test has passed. I will drain this now, and then I will dress the inside. This is just filled with uh, the old rubber that has disintegrated. I have to clean this out. You can see it's all nice and clean now on the inside. No more residue. All the solvent has been removed. This is ready for reinstallation. This is all dressed up. I have a small piece of our kitchen sponge. It's a, it's a soft scrub sponge, and I'm gonna use it to clean the mating surface for this large O-ring. Scrub, now I'll rinse. It came out very nice, nice and clean. Same procedure here for the inner lip of the top cover. That, that makes a big difference. There we go, this inner mating surface is now done. If you had leaks coming out of the top of this, it's either caused by a bad O-ring, which could easily be replaced, or, you know, this being extremely dirty and not making a good seal. A little more agitation. It's now three hours later. You can see how, how dingy the water is. The, the degreasing worked. You know, if I especially if I turn, kick it up a bit and agitate it, a lot has come out of these. I feel that that's good. I feel that 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 it's done its job. And what we're going to do is we're going to take these out and we're going to rinse them off and we're gonna move to phase two of this operation. It's important that each one gets washed off properly because we don't want uh, any of the detergent reacting with the acid.
I've put a new liner in the can. If, if this can wasn't my leaf can, it didn't have holes drilled in the bottom, I could have very easily washed out the can. I wouldn't need to use a liner, but be that as it may, I am. I'm gonna add water and I'm gonna use a, uh, uh, maybe a 15 to one ratio of water to muriatic acid. I'm gonna add the water first and use one of the filters as a guide to show how high the level is going to be. Always use eye protection when you do this. Always add the muriatic acid to the water, not the other way around. I mix the acid into the barrel, washed up just in case any splashed on me that I didn't realize. And now I will put the elements in one by one very carefully. There we go, I'll let that sit. This is not a strong mixture. I, I could see uh, little bubbles forming. You don't see like a major reaction. So this is gonna sit for several hours and then I'm gonna take it out and, and wash them off and we're gonna be done. And then we'll test again to see how quickly water drains out of these. The weather got dark quick after the rain. I, I had this covered, so it was okay. I'm just gonna pull these out and I'm gonna rinse them off and I'm gonna deal with this again tomorrow. Just as an immediate observation though, as I pull them out of the acid, Look how quick they drain as compared to before. That's like brand new performance right there. You see that? That's what we're going for. And now we're just rinsing off the uh, acid bath from here. Also getting started with the first part of dealing with the acid, which is dilution. Filling up the rest of this container with water, cut the acid further. We're going to be assembling the elements back into the manifold, and we can see that it's keyed, so they always go in in the right position. The only thing that we want to be aware of is that one of them is a short element. It is clearly labeled here on the manifold that the short element goes here. Short of that, no pun intended, uh, you could put them in in any order you want. I'm going to place them in now. Spacer on the bottom requires just a little bit more thought. A couple of things here. We could see where this hole is, and this would line up with the uh, pipe going to the uh, filter unit, right? The container. And we could see that they are, there are spacers here, these plastic spacers that, that hold the elements away from each other. And we can see there are also these stops here for the end of each filter, the 90 degree corners. So what we want to do is set it up as such that it would sit down on that first one. This would line up with the end of those first two and that these spacers would sit in between. It would, it would slowly be like massaged into place, checking that everything lines up and everything would just fall into position. So I will attempt to demonstrate this now live on camera so we can see this procedure. There we go. I now run the long bolt with one washer in the bottom, through like that. I'm gonna flip it over and nut with one washer on the top. I will hand tighten. Once hand tightened, you can secure the other side and very gently give it a little snug. That's it, that's it. Remember, it's just plastic on plastic. You don't wanna to torque the thing down and crack it. I then flip it back over carefully on the manifold. I take this pipe, I line up the dashes where they were previously. And lock the pipe back into position. This unit is done, it is ready for installation. I prepare the O-ring with some of the uh, Jax 327 multi-lube, right? Just coat the entire ring. Then I'll pop the new O-ring into position there we go. I'm going to be putting a little bit of multi-lube in this area here. The reason why I do this is because the O-ring has such a, a long travel 
uh, up that tube. I don't want it to bind or deform as I place it in. I wouldn't be able to, to know that that was happening as I installed it. And now holding from the lift points, I will line everything up very slowly, lowering the pipe on position. Everything slides down really easily, very nicely. No problems whatsoever. It's back in position. We're done. Next is this large rubber O-ring, and this will need to be uh, lubricated as well. And, and I'll tell you right now, this, this part isn't entirely fun, so you're just going to have to uh, put some lube in your hand like that. And you're just going to have to walk this around in a circle several times until the entire O-ring is coated. I'll urge you uh, to not wash your hands when you work with this stuff, but wipe it off with a paper towel until all the residue is gone because water does not mix well with this lubrication. So I just want to point that out. Eventually you reach a point where the entire uh, O-ring is completely coated and it can be laid down around the canister uh, with the green mark facing upward. Just like that. Here's the uh, dump cap for the tank. I have washed this and added some of the multi-lube to the rubber seal. With that, I reinstall the dump cap. I found it sufficient to give it a good hand tighten. Never leaks for me. If you don't feel comfortable with that, you could uh, uh, lightly, very lightly tighten it with some channel locks. For the next step, I'll be using the hose to fill up the canister fills up at least about halfway. I don't want the whole thing dry and have the pump having to fill it up. This is just something that I do. This is sufficiently filled with water now. I thought it'd just take a second to, to look at the, the after of this project. It looks like brand new filter elements in a brand new system. It's come a long way since we started this clean out. Let's close it up. When putting the cover on, the only real important consideration is the direction of the pressure valve because you want to be able to view it. Mine points in a certain direction so I could see it from the patio. So I make sure it seats in that direction and I press it down. Everything sits nice on the rubber O-ring and that's it, it's done. Now I take the metal band, negotiate it around. You can see spots where there's been some fading in the color of the unit. It gives you an idea where the band was before, it brings you back in the same location. Right, that's generally what I do. I don't know if it's necessary, it's just what I do. I get the band around and I just want to get the screw started so there's no slack so it doesn't fall off. And that's it. Just like that. Go back to my 9 16th ratchet and I will ratchet this. Uh, the spring is an indicator to tell you how tight to have it. When the spring coils are touching each other, you know that it's tight enough. So we have a way to go. And there we go. The band is locked down, the cover is now closed. I'll make sure the air valve is closed. Make sure the multi-valve is set to filter. Now I'm gonna reapply power to the pool pump. Everything seems to be working correctly. I'm gonna purge the air from the system. There we go. And what I want to do is record the pressure of this canister after the rebuild before any DE is inserted uh, into this unit as a control and keep those for my notes. So at 3250, I'm seeing seven PSI. At 2500, I'm seeing four PSI. At 1750, I'm seeing two PSI. At 1000, I can't read it. I'm gonna let it sit here at 2500 for a few minutes just to monitor everything, make sure everything's okay. Everything's been running great with no issues. We're ready for the last step in this project and that is adding the DE. It is critical that you add the correct amount of DE you will need to consult your guide based on the model you have. I am using three metered scoops and I have a process that I use. DE is an irritant. It's dangerous to work with when it is brand new. I will show you how I do it. These metered scoops are available at your local pool store. Instead of dragging the bag out and kicking up dust or scooping one at a time and walking with the DE, what I do is I measured three level scoops and put them in that bucket of water, making a slurry, and then I transfer that bucket over to the pool. Try not to breathe anything in or wear a face mask. Do in a well-ventilated area, whatever you have to do, I use a face mask.
just like that. Do that three times. I give it a little stir. It doesn't kick up any dust. It has the uh, consistency of um, clay. And now I just transport it over to the pool. Now I'm back poolside. I haven't even kicked up an ounce of dust because the whole mixture is wet. Adding water to it to dilute it and turn it into just like a, uh, a loose mixture. And then I take that loose mixture and I slowly pour it in. As I pour it in, I keep adding water to the bucket to allow more of the DE to release from the bucket. Until all the DE is gone. Clears the drain in about two seconds. It should all be inside the filter. I'll give this a couple minutes to settle down and then I will record the pressures with the new DE charge at the different speeds. And we are still seeing seven PSI for 3250, four PSI for 2500, two PSI for 1750, and uh, unreadable for 1000. Uh, they haven't changed. Everything seems good. And that's gonna be my baseline. So I'll bring it up to the normal operating speed, set the knob. We're done. I hope you found this video on the comprehensive maintenance of this Hayward DE filter system informative, entertaining, and useful. Thanks for watching.